Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about adrenergic receptors. These are also called adrenoreceptors, and they are the protein receptors that mediate the effects of epinephrine, which is also called adrenaline, and norepinephrine, which is also called noradrenaline. Uh, so we're talking about the hormone receptors or the neurotransmitter receptors that are on the surface of cells that are activated by the release of epinephrine or norepinephrine. Um, so adrenergic receptors are classified as alpha or beta, and then there are multiple types of each. So I'm going to go through those differences, uh, which of the two chemicals activate them and what the effects are. Um, so first are the alpha receptors. There are alpha-1 and alpha-2 receptors. They are both activated by norepinephrine and epinephrine. Uh, alpha-1 receptors are primarily located in smooth muscle cells of blood vessels and the urinary tract. So when they're activated, they induce constriction. Um, alpha-2 receptors are a little bit more complicated. Less is known about them. Um, but in the central nervous system, they inhibit the release of more norepinephrine. So norepinephrine acts on them to inhibit the release of more norepinephrine. On the peripheral nervous system, the function is not very well understood, but these receptors are found in the pancreas, veins, adipose tissue, gastrointestinal, sphincters, salivary glands, and other places. Um, activation results in decreased arterial blood pressure. So if you think about the systemic effects of norepinephrine is to increase blood pressure, it makes sense that if in certain places the norepinephrine is inhibiting further release of more norepinephrine, that it would have the opposite effect and it would cause the decrease of blood pressure. Okay, then we have three types of beta receptors. Um, and so on this slide, I included a lot of the terminology that is commonly used to describe the locations and functions of these receptors, and I will walk you through what they all mean. Um, so beta-1 receptors are also activated by both norepinephrine and epinephrine. Uh, they're primarily found in the heart, but they are located in a, a few other places throughout the body. Uh, so in the heart, they cause increased cardiac chronotropic effects and inotropic effects. So um, here, what we mean by chronotropic is that it increases heart rate. Chronotropic doesn't imply increase. It means a change in heart rate. But um, when the beta-1 uh, receptors are activated, it does cause increased chronotropic effects, meaning increased heart rate, similar to inotropic effects. That means force or power. And in this case, it's increased. So essentially, we're saying that it increases the forcefulness of contraction of the heart. Um, beta-2 receptors are not activated by norepinephrine, only by epinephrine. Um, these are found throughout the body, but especially in the lungs, in the bronchial smooth muscle cells in the lungs. Uh, so when these are activated, they have the effect to dilate blood vessels and bronchioles. Uh, that is why epinephrine is effective in treating asthma and anaphylaxis, is because it does cause uh, the bronchii to kind of relax and, and open up. Bronchii, bronchioles, depending on the level. Um, it also causes the muscles in the uterus, bladder, and gastrointestinal tract to relax. It decreases platelet aggregation, which is part of our blood clotting, so it decreases blood clotting. And it also increases glycogenolysis, meaning the breakdown of glycogen into glucose. So it's helping to um, sort of move our, it's helping to put more usable energy into our circulation to fuel our fight or flight. So glycogen is the stored form of glucose, and we want to mobilize our resources so that we can use that glucose to fuel our activity. Uh, now, I found this picture that you see here uh, that I thought was very clever. It put um, B1 because we have one heart, so our B1 receptors are primarily in the heart. B2, we have two lungs, and those uh, receptors are found abundantly in the lungs. So I thought that was a clever way to help you remember where those are located. Again, they're located in other places, but those are the primary locations and their primary functions. Um, then beta-3 receptors are only activated by epinephrine. They're found in both white and brown adipose tissue, and they increase fat oxidation, energy expenditure, and insulin-mediated glucose uptake. 
Uh, so again, we're working on mobilizing our resources, providing energy to ourselves to fuel our fight or flight. So by breaking down the fat stored in our adipose tissue and improving our ab ability to utilize that energy to support activity and fight or flight. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.